Thanks for watching another tutorial from timelapseblog.com. Lightroom is probably the best piece of software for anyone who wants to make time-lapse videos. I'm going to show how I batch edit hundreds of raw files into JPEGs with very little effort. I don't use Lightroom to convert the JPEGs into video, but I have tutorials for QuickTime, Virtual Dub, Picasa, and Windows Live Movie Maker on my website. I've written a full article about why photographers should shoot in RAW for time-lapse, but I think you'll see during this tutorial exactly how powerful RAW can be. Most of what I'm going to do to the files can't be done with JPEGs, or else it can't be done as well. I'm also sure when I shoot in RAW that any edits will be non-destructive. This is because photo editing software isn't legally allowed to make changes to most types of RAW files, including those used by Canon and Nikon. So I'll start by importing the files that I want to edit. Because I often do night photography, I sometimes have to select two folders if it was done over midnight. Uh, now that I have these, I have them in the library grid view. And I'm going to select something in the mid-range of what I shot, something that looks pretty average. And then I'm going to click on Develop. And Lightroom is structured so that you go from top to bottom with one big exception. And that is going to be Lens Correction. So I'm going to go down. And here I'm going to click Enable Profile Corrections. And I'm going to select the lens I used which is a Samyang 14mm lens, which also goes by uh, Bauer and uh, Rokinan, Rokinan in the US. And so as soon as I click this, you'll see the difference. There is a good bit of warping with the lens. Not much vignetting, but that will be a problem with some other lenses. Uh, one other thing you might want to do is remove chromatic aberration. If I click it here, I don't see much. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to look for a area of light against dark and see if this makes much of a difference. And it really, it really doesn't. I'm, I'm kind of straining here. I don't see anything. If you do have any chromatic aberration, what you'll see is a thin fringe of blue or yellow along these bright, these high contrast areas. But we don't have that, so I'm going to leave it off because uh, less editing is better, in my opinion. So the next thing we're going to do is crop. And I'm going to hit this for the crop overlay. I want this to be a fixed ratio, so I'm going to do the 16:9, which is an HD TV ratio. And I'm going to get it kind of where I like it, and then I'm going to align it. Uh, hopefully, I get this right in camera, but usually I don't. Usually, I have to kind of rotate this a little bit, which does give a little bit of fuzziness, but probably won't be noticed in a uh, HD video resolution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the corner here until I get this little rotation figure. And I'm going to use one of these lines. And sometimes it's hard to figure out what it should be lined up against. I'm looking kind of in the background here. I want this, the lines that I know are straight and I know that are straight across from me. I'm going to try to line those up. Um, if the cars don't look right, I might adjust it afterward. But I think that looks pretty good. So. We're going to click Done. Now that I have the photo cropped to the dimensions I want, I'm going to skip some of these other things. Uh, they're good things right here. This is uh, spot removal. If I have a little spot on here that's the same and the camera doesn't move, I can do that and apply it to, to all the photos. And that's going to work pretty well. But hopefully you get the dust spots or the dust out of your, off your sensor before you start shooting. Uh, which is pretty important, especially if you have moving clouds, something where uh, spot removal just won't work. Uh, nighttime is pretty forgiving on this, but this is a good tool to have. So the next thing I'm going to do is adjust the white balance. And this, I, I know I don't like it. When I was standing there, I, I saw that these lights were pretty green, and that uh, these lights right here I, were this harsh yellow sodium lights. And so the color you're seeing here is probably a bit more yellow than it needs to be. So there are a few ways to adjust this. The first one is we can change this and try to fit something here. Um, let me see. What would be good? Tungsten might be a good. And that's not terrible. It's you know it's a little too, a little too green, a little too blue. I'm not quite sure. Um, as shot is usually pretty good, but it's not perfect here. 
Uh, we can take the slider, and I like putting it to the extremes and just kind of feeling out what looks good to me. But let me show you one other tool that kind of is is kind of cool. This is the white balance selector. And if I click on this, now I can go in here, go to something I th feel is gray, give it one click, and that's pretty darn good. Uh, I might make a couple adjustments here, but not much. I mean, that's 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 pretty much what I'm going for. So uh, we adjusted temp, we adjusted tint. Now the next thing we're going to do is adjust the exposures. And if I go up here to the histogram, I can see on the far right we have a little peak, and on the far left there's a tiny peak. So if I click on these little triangles, I'm going to do this. I'm going to zoom in and do this one at a time, so we can kind of see what's going on. So this is going to show me black clipping, and we're not. I'm not seeing much here. Let me find a darker area. All right. So if I click this, I can start seeing a little blue spots and this is telling me that I'm losing any detail in these areas because all it's showing is black pixels. Now if I click on the right it's going to show me highlight clipping and this we should have a lot more of and I can even zoom out and you can see all the red areas are simply 100% white pixels we have no detail and I'll click it off and on here and you can you can see we have a good bit of this. So we could go to exposure, but that's going to be too much. We're going to get either clipping on one side or the other. So I'm going to put it back, kind of double click here, get it back to zero. Contrast I'm not going to touch for now. So I'm going to bring down the highlights a bit. And we can see already that's pretty good. Um, I don't mind having a little bit of clipping because if I completely get rid of clipping, what I'm saying is my picture has no white in it. And this picture has bright lights. It absolutely has some white in it. Um, same with shadows. If I get rid of all the shadows, and let me actually go to the shadows here because this is a little more subtle. Um, if, I'm, if I get rid of all the clipping on the left side here, I'm saying that there's absolutely no pure black in my picture. And this one there's not a whole bunch, but probably a little bit, just in, in shadows down here. Alright, so we get that done. Uh, whites and blacks we can adjust a little bit. This is going to be kind of to your taste. Uh, you know, it goes for the aesthetic that you're going for. And I'm just kind of doing this quickly. At this point, we can get a pretty flat image if we're not careful. Let's let's bring this up a little bit. You can see how the whole thing's flat. If that's the case, then I can go back to contrast and kind of play with it and get something that pops out a little bit more. In this case, I'm just if I put the blacks and the whites here, just about center, it's going to look okay. Last thing I want to do in this panel is uh, vibrance. Usually, clarity is going to do about the same thing as contrast but only in the midtones and I can play with that here and you can kind of see what it looks like it's a more subtle effect than than the uh, contrast uh, saturation is going to bring up all the colors or have no colors although there are better ways to go to black and white if that's what you want to do uh, vibrance is going to bring up the lesser used colors in the palette here so it's probably not going to affect the yellows the reds here but maybe we'll see the blues brought up a little bit, the screen might be brought up a little bit. And we, we don't want to go too high with it, but if you look at a lot of modern photos on uh, websites, a lot of these, the colors, the vibrance or the saturation has been brought up. People kind of like it. People want super blue skies, that type of thing. So don't overdo it, but you can probably uh, fudge it a little bit. And then saturation I'm just going to leave alone for now. Uh, the vibrance also won't or shouldn't affect skin tones. Uh, it it kind of stays out of that range so you can play with that without making people look like aliens. Alright so that's it for the basic. Uh, the other ones I'm not going to mess with right now. Uh, this one sometimes is useful especially I, I've had one where a woman walks through she's walk, wearing a bright bright red and suddenly she becomes 
the main focus of the time lapse, she becomes very distracting. So in that case, if she's the only one wearing red, I might just go like this with a red slider and you know suddenly she's a lot less noticeable. Um, I can also I can also click on this right here, find the uh, the one I want to increase or decrease. So let's say I want to go make the green a little greener, and then I'm just kind of clicking and dragging up or down, and I can see that the green is being affected and the aqua a little bit. But for this one, I don't think I need any of that. All right, so the final thing I'm going to do here is just click at the bottom. The it has a two Y's in it, I'm not quite sure, but it's a before and after picture. And here I can see that my after I like a lot more. It's it's crisp, the colors come out a lot better. The cool colors in the background that I was going for really pop out. This is from someone standing there, while it might not be 100% accurate, this is kind of what my eye was detecting while I was there, even though I was aware of the sodium lights. So this looks okay. Sometimes I, I look at this and realize I've gone too far and I need to go back so this is always a good last step so from here I'm going to just go back to the library I can double click or hit down here for grid view and now I'm going to right click and go to develop settings and then come up here and go copy settings and I can do check all in this case there's nothing I'm going to I want different between the the ones if I was doing this and each one was a different crop factor. Maybe if I'm doing photos then it makes a difference. For time lapse I can just do check all, copy. And so now I'm going to go to the last one in the sequence and the first one which I was stupid and, and didn't mark. So I do have a little fudge room here so I'm going to go in and I know that's within the sequence. So I've got these all selected. Right click, develop settings, and paste. And that's it. And we'll, we'll start seeing the uh, thumbnails here changing. And that takes a little bit of time, but we really don't have to wait for it. So we can go down to export. And I want to talk quickly about the export settings here. So where I'm going to put it, I already have a folder. Uh, file naming, I'm not going to make a difference unless, you know, this is 9998. And then it goes to 0001, in which case I'll probably have to rename them. But for me this is fine. Uh, video I don't need to use. File settings. I'm going to export into JPEG. Uh, quality 76. This is the the default. Um, sRGB. If you are printing don't use this one. If, if you need to export photos to print in the future remember to change this. Um, photographers will tell you the S before the RGB stands for a not so nice word. Uh, but it is the the color space of monitors and TVs, and so we're going to use the sRGB. Uh, the file size I don't care about. Image sizing. If I wanted to, at this point, I could resize to 1920 by 1080, which is the HD dimensions. I'm not going to do that because I want these to be full size, so I can zoom in, zoom out, you know, f follow a car, whatever I want to do without making the image uh, lower resolution. Uh, resolution here doesn't matter if you're not printing. Uh, output sharpening, I, sh I hit screen and standard. I don't know if it does a thing. This is the only one I'm, I, I gotta tell you I'm not 100% on. Uh, metadata really doesn't matter for us. Watermarking and post-processing don't matter. So after this I'm going to hit export it's getting ready. Now if I look over in the top left I can see this little taskbar and it's going to very slowly export my files. And when it's done I'll go ahead and turn this into a time lapse using probably Virtual Dub or QuickTime Pro and then I'll put it at the end of this tutorial. So I hope this was helpful. If there are any other settings I missed that you want to know about leave a comment. Uh, I do have links to Lightroom on my uh, on the tutorial page for Lightroom on my website and if you have any other questions please let me know thank you